Let's make some pop art dessert drawings. So what is pop art? Pop art is short for popular art. Pop art began in the 1950s, almost 70 years ago. Pop artists like to make art of popular things. One of their most famous subjects was food. Pop artists also like to repeat their subjects or have more than one subject in their artwork. Let's learn a little more about a famous pop artist named Wayne Thiebaud. Wayne Thiebaud is a pop artist known for his colorful paintings of desserts. Take a look at some of his amazing paintings of sweet treats, like ice cream, candy, donuts, pies, and cakes. He is 100 years old and still living today. He just celebrated his 100th birthday on November 15th of this year. He was born in Arizona in 1920 and now lives in Long Beach, California. He is considered a contemporary artist because he is still living and creating art today. Before he was known as a pop artist, Wayne Thiebaud had an internship with Walt Disney in 1936 when he was only 16 years old. He got to draw some of the Disney characters that we know today. He worked there before he painted these famous sweet treat paintings that we will be inspired by for our project. So let's review our directions first. You will need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and coloring materials for this project. First, we'll start out by folding our paper into fourths because we're going to draw four different desserts as you can see in the picture here. We'll draw two lines on the folds to make four sections. Then you'll follow along with the video to draw the four different dessert drawings. After you draw, outline with a black marker and color your desserts. Use contrast and variety to make them stand out from each other. All right, let's go ahead and get so started. I'm ready to start because I have my paper, my pencil, my eraser, I have a black marker for outlining, and I have markers and crayons to color with. For our dessert drawings today, we're going to be using some simple lines and shapes. Let's review them a little bit. So we'll be using horizontal lines, straight lines that go from side to side. We'll be using vertical lines, straight lines that go up and down. We'll also be using diagonal lines, lines that are straight that go at an angle. For shapes, we'll be using some long and thin rectangles. Rectangle. We'll also be using some triangles for the top of pieces of cakes and pies. We'll also be using some fun lines like bumpy lines for icing, wavy lines to show filling, and other shapes that you can think of to decorate your desserts. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take our piece of paper and fold it into fourths. That means four even spaces. First, I'm going to fold my paper in half hamburger style. I'm going to make sure to match up the corners and make a crease. Then I'm going to open it up and fold it in half the other direction, making sure to match up the corners and then make the crease. Now when I open it up, I should have four smaller rectangles. One, two, three, four. Now on the creases, the folds that I've made, I'm going to draw lines. So I'm going to use my pencil to draw a line on top of the crease. This is a vertical line because it's going up and down. Now I'm going to turn my paper and draw a line on the other crease. This one's a little long, so I like to break it up into two shorter lines. All right, now we have four different spaces for our four different dessert drawings. So I would suggest drawing your desserts in pencil first and then outlining with a black marker. 
but I'm going to be using my black marker today to do our drawing directions so that you can really see them. So here we go. First, we're going to draw a pie. We're going to start with a curved line like a rainbow. It's going to go from one side to the other. Notice that I'm using my finger first to do a little bit of ghost drawing. All right, there's the top of our pie. Now below it, we're going to connect the sides with a wavy line. Then we're going to do one more line below it. And this is another wavy line. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the line above it. This will look like our pie's crust. Now let's draw our pie dish. We're going to use two slightly diagonal lines. Slightly means it's gently going on a diagonal, not up and down and it's not very angled. This is going to be the side of our pie dish. So here's one and two. Now let's connect those with the horizontal line. Cool, now we have our pie dish. Next, I'm going to draw some holes in my pie's crust up here. These are going to look like teardrop shapes or raindrop shapes. If you're not sure how to do this, you can just do a small oval. Let's make our pie look like it just came out of the oven by drawing some curvy lines above it for steam. Now I'm going to draw a design on my pie dish. I'm going to use some straight and diagonal lines, but you can do any pattern that you can think of. Okay, so here is our pie. Now let's draw a piece of pie. I'm going to start with a rectangle shape for the side of my pie slice. So a rectangle has two shorter sides and two longer sides. The longer sides are going to be going horizontally. There's my rectangle. Now I'm going to draw a triangle sitting on top of my rectangle to show the top of the pie slice. I'm going to put a little dot just big enough for me to see more than halfway over to, to the right side of the page. So about right here. Then I'm going to use a diagonal line that goes from the corner of the rectangle up to the dot. Now I'm going to draw another diagonal line that goes from the dot to the other corner of my rectangle. Awesome, there is the top of my pie. Now we need to draw the crust. Let's draw a horizontal line below the bottom of the rectangle. Notice that it comes out a little bit more. Now we're going to draw a vertical line that goes up for the side of the crust. And I'm going to connect it over here with a little line to show that the crust is all around the bottom and the side. Now let's do a bumpy line for the top of the crust. I'm going to come up here and do a bumpy line. Next, we can draw some details on our pie slice. I'm going to use a wavy line that goes up and down to show some of the pie's filling. This could be like a berry filling or a chocolate filling, whatever you like. I'm also going to do this kind of wavy shape on the top of my pie slice. Okay, now we have drawn our pie slice. Let's do a cake. And this is going to be a two-tiered cake or a cake with two levels. We're going to start out with a smaller and little bit longer rectangle than our pie slice. So this 
rectangle is going to have shorter sides. One, two, then we're going to draw the bottom of it and connect those two lines. Now we need to connect it at the top. Then we're going to draw a rectangle on top, but this one will be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to start with my two vertical lines that come in a little bit. Now I don't have to draw the bottom of it because it's going to connect at the top of this first tier of the cake. Then I would connect the top tier here. All right, so I have my basic cake shape, but now we definitely need to add some decorations to it. So I'm going to use some bumpy lines at the bottom to make it look like icing. You could use a different kind of line or shape if you'd like. I'm going to even have it come out a little bit on the sides. Then I'll do the same thing to the top of the first tier of the cake. Let's do it one more time at the top of the cake. Now I'm going to put a candle on the top so this is like a birthday cake, but you can choose to do that if you'd like or not. Now let's add some designs on the side of our cake. I'm going to use some bumpy lines again that come up and down. You could choose to do a different design if you'd like. I'm going to repeat that shape right below. And I'll finish that off with some dots above where the lines connect. This is going to be really fun to color in. Now I'm going to repeat that design on the second tier of my cake. Awesome, now we have drawn our two tiered or our two leveled cake. Next, let's draw a piece of cake. So I'm going to start with a smaller and shorter rectangle again. This is going to be a cake with some frosting in the middle. So first let's start with that smaller and shorter rectangle using two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Now I'm going to do another rectangle that matches that right above it, but I'm going to leave a little bit of space. So I'm going to draw my vertical line, but I'm not gonna go all the way to the rectangle. Let's do it again on the other side. So make sure you leave a little bit of space here. Now I'm going to connect that with the horizontal line. The space that I'm leaving here is for my frosting that's between the two pieces of cake. Let's make the top horizontal line. Now I'm going to connect these with a line to show the side of the cake. And I'm also going to draw a line a little bit above the top rectangle. Now let's make the top of our cake, kind of like we made the top of our pie slice. I'm going to make a little dot where the top of the triangle of the cake shape will be. Remember, this is a little bit over from the middle of these. So a little bit to the right side. Now let's draw a diagonal line. I'm not gonna connect it to this. Again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of space to show where the frosting will be. Then I'm going to draw an, my other diagonal line to make the top of my cake's edge. And then I will connect it with a horizontal line that goes across. There, I have the top of my cake. Now this looks a little funny because I'm missing the back edge of the cake. It kind of looks like these are open and there's nothing there. So I need to add some icing. 
or frosting on the side of my cake. I'm going to draw a vertical line that comes down on the side of my cake, but I'm gonna stop right above the bottom and come out to make some frosting. This almost looks like a very tall letter B. Then I'll make some icing on the top with a bumpy line. I decided to draw a cherry on the top of my cake. You could decide to draw a cherry as well or another topping that you like. Now I need to outline the lines that break up the sections for my dessert. Since you probably drew with a pencil, now you should outline your drawings with a black marker so that they really pop out like this. And then we'll be ready to add some color. Once you've outlined with a black marker, go ahead and erase any pencil lines that are showing through to make your artwork look neater. Now that I have erased, I'm going to add some patterns to the backgrounds around my desserts. I just feel like my artwork needs a little more detail to make it extra special. You can decide to keep yours solid or add patterns, but our goal is to make each of the four desserts stand out so they're not all going to have the same background. So I'm going to change my background color or design. So here I'm doing spirals and I'm going to create a pattern with them by repeating them around the pie. Now that I've added patterns to my backgrounds, I'm ready to add color. I will be using crayons to add color to my desserts and to color in the rest of my background. When you're adding color, try to add a little bit of value. Notice how I'm coloring dark at the edge of my pie crust and then I'm getting lighter as I come out into the center. When you add value, that means you're using different tints and shades of a color. And the more value a color has, the darker it is. So this area has more value than this area. When you add value to your artwork, you're making your artwork look more realistic and three-dimensional. You can add value by using a colored pencil or a crayon. Markers don't work very well for adding value because they are made of ink. Okay, so I am all finished now because my drawings are outlined with a black marker, my desserts are colored in, and the backgrounds are colored in. And each one is different from the other. So each one has a different background. I hope you had fun creating your dessert drawings inspired by the pop artist, Wayne Tebow. I can't wait to see your drawings of these tasty treats. <laughs>